also, um, as noted in the motion, it was agreed that the WEA will maintain that. Okay. Um, so no board um, maintenance required. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. And finally, the business manager contract extension, Bob. I don't know if you. Uh, so okay. so uh, I, I just want to say, um, I just want to say that. We're very blessed to have a great business manager, and um, in my first year here, I will just say that uh, it's been, uh, Al's done a great job, um, does a great job, no matter who's sitting in the seat, but he's done a great job of assisting me in a very difficult year, uh, and assisting us in a very difficult year, um, in addition to all the normal things that go on, and um, so I, I, am, I am very supportive and very um, um, appreciative of his, of his work. And um, I know that the, the board has talked about uh, a compensation uh, for next year, and I'd like to move that forward. And I don't know if you want to sure. indicate what it is, but um, yeah. I, I think it's, it's truly, truly deserved. And uh, thank, thanks, Al, for all the work you do for us. We really appreciate it. Okay. And I'll move that we extend the contract with all the changes um, for the business manager through July 30th, 2020, and approve a 3% increase for the 2017-18 school year. July or June, June 30th, June. July 30th. June, did I say July? You said July. I'm June sorry. 30th. June 30th. We'll give you the month. All right. Second. Yeah, I said with all changes. Oh, you did say that? Well. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. So um, I know that was quick that we went through all of that. Um, but we just need to make sure we had a quorum here um, for all of the motions. <coughs> So um, we're going to go back to the agenda. I believe we're on um, reports 3.1. Um, and um, Lisa, whenever you need to sign off, just, just let us know so we know you're not there. Um, However, we're going to honor you first before yeah. you sign off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So Kira, who wants to go first, Carrie? You or Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> um, should I should go to the podium or do it for you. Oh, we can do it from you, here. Yeah, okay. All right. Yep. So um, this, this is that sad time of the year where we say goodbye to Board of Education members. And um, we're saying goodbye to three dedicated, caring, supportive leaders for our school. Um, these people have spent a lot of time, um, a lot of their own time, away from families, being at these meetings and being part of other events. And so tonight we're honoring Carrie Matthews, Lisa Connor, and Karen Kravitz. All three were elected on, in May of 2013, and they began their term on July 1st, 2013, having served one term. And uh, they will be leaving us, and uh, they will be sorely missed. So um, I will first talk about Lisa. Um, in case we lose connection with her, I'll start with her. Um, Lisa is an attorney who specializes in corporate law. She moved to Woodbridge in 2009. Lisa has two children, former multi-age parent, um, she graduated from Harvard College and Georgetown University. She was elected as our Board of Education Secretary in July of 2016. Lisa has served our board very well as Cave Liaison, Chair of the Woodbridge Board of Education Policy Committee, as well as being on the Superintendent's Cafeteria Task Force. Lisa has also been the Chair of the Town's Ad Hoc Energy Advisory Task Force. Lisa, on behalf of the board, thank you for your service, and we will miss you greatly. We're on Lisa, I just just had a, a couple of things. Um, Lisa has always brought incredible thoughtfulness to every issue, um, and her calm and measured approach will be greatly missed. Um, Lisa often brings up ideas or concerns that bring a different perspective to our discussions. Um, she has an eye for detail, and with other and we that would otherwise have been missed, and we will miss her participation on the board. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa, um, on behalf of the board, there is a present here for you. <laughs> but since you're not here, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> uh, we will get it. We will get it to you somehow, some way. Um, and it's a small token of our appreciation for all of your work. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's now time to honor Carrie Matthews. Carrie is a lifelong Woodbridge resident, and she has that she has two children. Um, Carrie attended. Beecher Road School. Like many Woodbridge residents, she attended school right here and came back. I never left, I guess, right, Carrie? Um, besides attending Beecher Road School, she was also a Hopkins School graduate and also a graduate of Tufts University. 
Carey is a professor of computer science. During her Woodbridge Board of Education tenure, Carey served on the policy committee, has been active as a parent, volunteer, and leader in the LEGO Robotics League, and also has helped out tremendously with the PTO Halloween boot. Carrie, you will be sorely missed. Um, we hope you have wonderful things to spend your time on instead of coming to Board of Education meetings. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm sure Mark has been Carrie's first child graduated from Beecher, and so I guess you're graduating also. Um, Carrie's common sense views have kept us all focused on what's important and kept us from getting too involved in minor issues. You will be greatly missed. Thank you, Carrie. If Carrie is able to walk and carry her package, <laughs> we'll let her do that. And it's also um, a pleasure and a privilege to um, honor Karen Kravitz. Karen could not be with us tonight. Uh, Karen um, is an attorney with a local law firm, has two daughters, and is a graduate of Cornell as well as Hofstra Universities. Karen moved to Woodbridge in 2006 and served as a Girl Scout leader for Troop 61009. She's volunteered with the American Heart Association, served on the board of directors of the Woodbridge Child Center, and during her Woodbridge Board of Education tenure, Karen served as the chair of the facilities committee and was also on the superintendent cafeteria task force. Karen, wherever you are, we thank you so much for your service and we will sorely miss you as well. We know that she will be watching this on YouTube at some point. So Karen, um, I want to thank Karen for her dedicated service. Um, her calm approach to every topic has been invaluable throughout um, her service on the board. She'll be greatly missed by all. She has a knack of bringing us back to the big picture um, and our, in a way of articulating things that brings us all to agreement um, and uh, moves us forward on what we need to do. So thank you, Karen. Okay. And I just had, had one more kind of summary thing to sure. say. Um, every person has made a difference um, to the school. Each person has made a contribution that will continue to be felt um, long after they've left. Um, it's often hard to see the impact we have as members of the Board of Education, so I hope that everybody takes away um, the knowledge that they have made a difference, you have affected the course of the school, and you have been appreciated as a member of the Board of Education. So thank you to everybody. So we are on PTO update, and I think um, we don't have um, an update. Amy said she could not be here tonight. Yeah, I, I just I tonight. just want to read something that Amy sent. She said she might not be able to be here, um, and I just thought this was such a nice thing because she's such a great volunteer and does so much for the school. And what she said, it's been a true pleasure to attend Board of Ed meetings this year. It means so much to me as a parent that such passionate, dedicated, smart, and fair people work so hard in the best interests of our Beecher children, teachers, and staff. I so appreciate all the effort you and everyone on the board does for our Beecher community. So I just thought that was such a nice thing for her to say when she is mm -hmm. such an incredible, yeah, she is. Um, you know, volunteer at the school and, you know, does everything. So thank you, Amy. Okay. Um, um, superintendent report. Okay. So I'm going to go through a number of things. It's been a very busy end of the year, and so this may be a little longer than usual, so uh, bear with me. But uh, all these things are uh, important to mention and, uh, uh, and proud to mention in terms of what's been going on. We had, um, again, I'll just say it one more time, we had a, just a great Arts Week 10 uh, experience a few weeks ago. It was a joy to experience the excitement and uh, enrichment of Arts Week. Highlights included the hundreds of clay elephants as you've seen around, special colors worn by the school uh, community on certain days, special assemblies, concerts, and a great family night. And of course, anyone who went ventured down to New Haven to see the student arts display at 260 College Street was really in for a treat. So thank you to our art and music teachers for um, making Arts Week all it was, a great success, and many others who supported that. Um, I just want to thank the board tonight for their vision and mission um, vote of confidence, and we were, it was exciting to put this together and, and, and to really work on this uh, in a very uh, uh, highly structured and I think uh, con con concentrated way, and, and, and all who were part of the vision and mission um, small group committee really felt good about what we did, and so we're looking forward to making that vision and mission alive in our school with, with parents, with students, with teachers, uh, so it's a living and breathing statement. Healthcare changes, you're aware that obviously that we're moving to Connecticut as of July 1st. We held three informational meetings for staff um, over the past month. There was a general meeting 
And then there was two other meetings that actually had Connecticut here representatives. Um, cards are being issued to all staff members and uh, everything with the transition has gone smooth so far. So uh, that's good to know. In terms of hiring, as you know, tonight we uh, approved the hiring of a resource teacher. We've also posted for a full-time health position. Um, and we also have a one-year technology position that has been posted and not, not so far off in the distance. We'll be posting for the long-term supposition for music that you also approved the, uh, um, the leave for. I have the pleasure of attending the Safety Patrol end of the year luncheon, a special luncheon in their honor. Uh, these are students in grades three, four, and five who work diligently as uh, leaders and peer models and helping us with safety during um, dismissal and arrival to school. So hats off to our Safety Patrol. Also hats off to our, um, our performers, our, our band and our core students. We had the annual adjudication on May 31st. And uh, again, as been in the past, we maintain an exceptional level of performance. Judges were, were impressed with the Beecher Road School program, the size of the program, acknowledged the program, uh, really performed at a level close or not, or, or actually at a middle school. Um, platinum honors were presented to the string ensemble and beginning chorus. Gold medals were awarded to the advanced band and chorus, jazz ensemble and combined chorus. So we would uh, like to congratulate Mr. Lech and Mrs. Merikin on um, their work with the students and we have, we have just great musicians here. I attended my first D.A.R.E. graduation here and participated in that on June 2nd. I will let Mrs. Prisco talk a little bit about that um, great event uh, during her principal's report in a few moments. I've been to many end of the year celebrations and uh, while they're a little bit of a memory now, it's just tremendous, tremendous events going on at the end of the year with tremendous parent attendance and support um, and, and great, great student work talent and talent showcased. Administrator negotiations um, is, has started. Uh, the state timeline for that process has begun and it consists with past practice. Our Board of Education attorney will be leading our negotiations um, actually starting tomorrow. Um, and I'll be attending that obviously and uh, we'll be moving that forward in the timeline that's required by, uh, by law. I also had an opportunity and the pleasure of congratulating all of our student council members uh, at their celebration breakfast last week. Our student council, as you know, continues to reach out and it is a great arm of our school, reaching out to many people, many places, and it was great to see uh, several guests from the Senior Center actually attend and offer their thanks and congratulations as well because the Senior Center is a place where our <coughs> students have gone to reach out and to make connections with the community. Uh, Asbestos compliance inspection. Uh, every three years, uh, there is a compliance inspection that has to take place, and that took place last week. Um, on the visit, they took special note of the areas that uh, we have um, removed asbestos during the building project. We have very few places left in the building where asbestos is actually evident. We expect to receive a written report in July. Uh, last week, I attended a regional transportation meeting at our regional service center, ACES. Um, there are several superintendents, including myself, who have been interested in working with ACES to see if it's possible to pool resources, maintain high standards, but also to save money in the process in order to try to pool um, the transportation that um, is quite costly in many situations. So I uh, don't know exactly how that's going to play out, but um, it's something um, very worth venturing into and we will let you know along the way how that unfolds. As mentioned before, but worth mentioning again, we've had a significant increase in our the number of pre-K students, um, ages three and four, who receive services for next year, and we have already are making those plans to open up an additional afternoon section of pre-K using our existing special education staff. Curriculum projects are underway, and I'll let Mrs. Prisco talk a little bit about that in a moment, and it was just um, fantastic to not only participate in, but to attend and watch. Um, um, everything unfolded with the BRS graduation over at the high school last Thursday on our last day of school. It was a beautiful ceremony. I'll let Mrs. Prisco talk a little bit about that and brag a little bit about that great event. Last week, we had the honor of naming the 2018 Teacher of the Year for Beecher Road School, Joanne Giaquinto. Our teacher for English language learners was selected as the 2018 Teacher of the Year. Uh, Joanne's been here since 1995. She's a great advocate for our students. She's the leader in our school, and she'll be honored at the State Teacher of the Year ceremony in November. Um, 
My last edition of the uh, superintendent parent update went out a few weeks ago, but right now we're working on the bridge. The bridge is, will be going out um, most likely early July at this point. We have the first draft back to take a look at and to actually make edits to, so we're looking forward to getting that out to our um, town residents and school families and to give them uh, sort of the end of the year report for uh, the great things going on at Beecher Road School. Summer school update, as you know, summer enrichment and extended day and uh, other special programs will be starting up soon. Um, actually, we'll be starting up as early as next week with, and the recreation program also will be uh, working hand in hand. So all the plans are in process and, uh, and uh, things are happening and school will start up again before you know it. And uh, my, last, my last comment will just simply be, even though we've just honored um, Lisa and Karen and Carrie, I just want to say that it's um, all three of those people, Carrie, uh, Lisa, you still on there? She's gone. Um, all, all three are very special because part of the first board that I've been part of here. So um, I appreciate all of your significant contributions and uh, congratulations also to Steve and Nancy for the re-election and of course with our new board members, Megan, Paul, and John. Looking forward to working with them. That ends my report. But I am still on, Bob. I just had you on mute. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we just gave you another, another accolade. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, so the, so the next part. Yeah. Um, so the next part is our tri tri state math report um, on our agenda. And uh, oh, oh I, was, I was I was actually gonna. Well, then, oh, yeah, first. Okay, fine. You know something, if, if, if Jean and Marie, if you don't mind, let, actually let, let, let's let Jean go ahead. That that's probably makes more sense. Why don't you go ahead and uh, add on to those things that I didn't uh, expound on? So for the last uh, report of the year, um, I will echo, there were so many celebrations towards the end of the year, and honestly, it is the most exciting part to see the first graders and the kindergartners do their song and say goodbye, and you know, they'll be back in a few weeks or next week when summer enrichment starts. <laughs> but they are so proud of their hard work, and we're so proud of them, and thankful to the teachers. And we know how busy it gets at the end of the year, and these extra things that the teachers and the teacher assistants who support them and the secretarial staff who's in the north office letting in the masses um, and everybody who pitched in so just thank you because they are the things that the children will remember so we love those celebrations as Bob mentioned our dare graduation we were joined by Beth Heller this year representing the town and its continued commitment as well as the members of the Woodbridge Police Department who have supported um, our program and the students were also treated to a lunch by the Rotary Club, so a pizza lunch, which was very lovely. And they, they enjoyed some social time with their friends. But the meaning of the day, you really heard it in the students who were kind of honored with some different awards, citizenship awards, and especially the essays. It was very, very difficult, Officer Lynch said, to choose essay winners this year. Um, but the ones that were read, you can see and hear how the students were touched and what they will walk away with. So um, that right there says it all, that it's definitely worth it. And ultimately the slideshow, which is the probably most fun for the students, mm -hmm. but um, they get to see all of their activities and they do all the picture taking for the most part. So it's really kind of a nice way to wrap up the celebration. And our sixth grade promotion ceremony, again, joined by so many dignitaries, especially the students, and we rehearse the day before. And every time we rehearse, I say, it's not gonna go off well. <laughs> um, but I always know that it will. And again, I, I say that it truly did. And a new tradition for us, recent over the last few years, is adding in the song. And it's just very touching, especially now that we have a song that we will use that was written by a teacher student, music mm -hmm. and lyrics, Ashley DeRay. And so when you, when the parents are sitting in the audience and all the children are singing to them as their last goodbye, the last day is the name of the song, um, you start to reflect because as we've said before, this is the longest place they will stay in any one educational environment. And for some families, it's you know 14 or 15 years, multiple children through. So, um, you know, Ellen Scalatar, Selectman was there. Uh, Representative Clarities, Senator Logan was a first time and he was so impressed with the children. So we thank everybody who takes the time to help get that together. 
and um, you know continue to have a promotion ceremony to recognize those students maybe we'll come up with some new ideas maybe change it up a little but we really think that they've been here a long time and it's a nice way to send them off and my most recent principal's message as you know we've kind of gone to this digital e-notify as it's called and you receive a principal's message every two weeks on a Friday afternoon at about 4 o'clock or 4.30. This one included a very, very brief three questions survey to ask for some feedback from parents about um, do you prefer digital and in the responses so far everyone has said digital and um, ask for frequency. We gave three options monthly weekly or every other week as it is now and um, so it's been a little bit split there um, a lot of it's fine right now unless you have more to tell us kind of so we will continue to wait for those responses and we will continue to send those messages out and there is also a place to put a comment so if you haven't read the principal's message please do so because it also includes the classroom teachers for next year the assignments tentative as it always is um, but it includes the assignments for next year as much as school has just ended and said how busy we were and it seems very quiet we've got some very busy teachers working on some curriculum writing and so <coughs> this week will be a very busy week for that it started actually on Friday we had some work um, with math on Friday with Joanne Giaquinto um, working with Maureen Krawick and doing some work to help make assessments accessible for students in uh, English language learners. We continue that work this week and some other work with math, um, working some curriculum there. Um, we have our representative, our consultant from ACES joining us for a few days. Um, we are working in language arts in our primary grades, first grade, building, um, some building up and strengthening our phonics work. Um, and all, of course, science work with Dr. Uh, Stebinger and sixth grade has already started and we have some more work that will progress throughout the summer. And that's it for me. I um, just want to give a plug for our summer book fair before I go for the PTO. They are not here. And once again, the second summer now, we will be offering a summer book fair Mondays and Tuesdays throughout summer enrichment in the morning. Um, Sandy will send out the schedule and then the last week it will be open every day and you'll get that information. It was just a small little book fair to add to the summer reading that I hope all our students do as well as some of the summer math. And um, thank you for those of you who are leaving us. It's been my pleasure to work with you. I don't know if you're still there, Lisa, but um, you know, for the time that you've been here, you've been very supportive of us always a willing ear to listen and um, some great suggestions along the way so I wish you lots of luck thank, thank you. you any questions for me yeah. no. All right. okay. thank you right. thank you thank you mrs. Prisco so we're going to move into our um, tri-state math report um, and uh, just want to just give a little bit of, of background just to remind us all of you know where did this start and uh, what was the follow-up all about? Um, and first, I'd just like to uh, welcome to the podium Jean Malo and Maureen Kravick, our, our uh, teacher leaders in math. I uh, appreciate their putting this together. They have streamlined a, a much longer report that was given to the Tri-State um, uh, group of visitors. And we um, appreciate you doing that. Just, just a little bit of background. Uh, some of us know this, some of us don't. But the Tri-State Consortium um, has made several visits to Beecher Road School over the years. And the visit they made most recently as a full group was in 2015, May, two, May 27th through 29th, 2015. Um, and the Tri-State group is a group of, um, of educators and leaders from public school districts across Connecticut, New York, New Jersey. Uh, they consider themselves a dynamic learning organization that values systems thinking and to continuous improvement. Um, back in 2015, um, math was selected <coughs> as the area of focus. And so why, why math, you may ask. So at that point, the new Common Core State Standards had come out. Uh, we had introduced a new resource, Investigations. <coughs> and uh, with all that, and knowing that perhaps over the, over, uh, the, the distant uh, past, more time had been given to language arts, it was time to really give much more attention to math. 
uh, given the standards change, investigations resource, and also wanted to just to reevaluate where we were as a whole school community with math. Um, for that three-day visit, um, the staff developed two essential questions that guided all of the activities of the visit. The first essential question was this. To what extent does our students' work in math reflect an alignment of curriculum, demonstrating a balance between procedural knowledge and real-world applications, and also, how does it inform us about what students know and are able to do? The second essential question of the visit was, to what extent do we recognize, nurture, and meet the diverse math needs of all learners? So the three-day visit took place, and a lot of work has happened since that 2015 visit in May. Um, and it's typical for Tri-State to return, and they did that this past spring, and, or was it winter, March 27th. <laughs> March 27th, I'm not sure what kind of day that was, but they came for a half-day visit. Um, and um, Jean and Maureen led through a really a, a summary of what we've done in the past two years. I'd like to thank them for that. And uh, tonight's presentation is sort of a summary of that, a high-level summary. And so I'll get out of the way so we can look at the summary and, uh, and hear what they have to say. So we're pleased to be able to share our progress on the recommendations of the Tri-State Committee. Um, we as a school community accomplished these goals together. So just again, those are the uh, essential questions that we had um, presented to the Tri-State Committee uh, back in 2015. And um, what we did um, after this visit was we came up with a math action plan. And uh, what we're going to share with you are um, the two main goals from that action plan and some bullets um, underneath uh, both. This was a 30 slide presentation to um, the Tri-State Committee. Um, so we, it is a summary of a summary of a summary, really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So under the first goal, there are two objectives. The first objective is to develop a cohesive mathematics assessment system that informs instruction. So to do that, we have analyzed the existing assessments and made revisions as necessary. We're using assessment data to inform our instruction. We now have a school-wide school data team that to chronicle the students' data over time and to show growth over time. We also have a common year-end assessments with Orange and Bethany at the sixth grade level when they go from sixth to seventh grade, and that creates a cohesiveness among the districts. And we also now have regular meetings with the administration and teachers at the middle school that are several times a year. Yeah, and the second uh, bullet is um, about meeting the mathematical learning needs of all students. So we have worked um, over the past several years on created differentiated lessons and projects and activities throughout the grades, including enrichment. We have established uh, regular um, meetings with grade level teams and math specialists. So Maureen and I meet regularly with every team um, to talk about curriculum and to talk about the needs of students. We have increased PD for teachers um, that focuses on the needs of all learners. Uh, including high achievers. Um, we created walkthrough protocols which got us into the classrooms uh, so that we could see what was um, what was happening there. Um, teachers had their professional learning goals focused on mathematics uh, and we continued a school-wide focus on problem solving. So that's one area where we're really able to differentiate well and, and, and see what kids can, um, can do with their thinking. Uh, we also had a math committee um, this was a group of um, teachers volunteering after school to meet um, several times a year and um, we looked specifically at math practice standards and then we also explored math workshop um, with the math committee. So that's a great group of, of teachers and we're looking forward to continuing that next year. Um, we're going to be doing some of our work around a book um, that we're going to be reading together. This will be the second book, yeah. Right. We had a, another book that we, that we worked with this year. Under our second goal, we had one objective, to provide information to parents and the community in multiple formats. So this year we had the pleasure of hosting a Greg Tang Family Math Night with Bethany and Orange. 
We have updated the website to include summer math packets for grades two through six. Um, we maintain ongoing communication to parents with classroom updates. Teachers meet with parents to update them on their students' progress. We have the Superintendent's Academy, Superintendent Parent Updates, reports at monthly board meetings, and the e-glass from principals. So how has all of this affected teacher practice? First, we are seeing an increased use of data uh, to inform instruction. So we are working with teachers, we're looking at spreadsheets, we're looking at data, um, we're looking at fluency data, we're looking at problem solving data, we're looking at the data from the STAR assessments, and we're, um, we're looking at that and thinking about what are we going to do um, to continue to help students. Second, um, math instruction is more consistent as a result of our work with the curriculum. We have, um, as we said earlier, we've been meeting regularly with the math, um, with the um, grade levels, and um, we're talking about curriculum a lot, all the time, really. Yeah. So it's, um, it's more consistent. Um, and also, teachers um, have been using differentiated resources more consistently than they were uh, in the past. Um, some of those examples of differentiated resources uh, include performance tasks, which are quite challenging from um, Illustrative Math, which is a great website. Also problem solving tasks from uh, the Exemplars uh, series. And also resources from uh, Marcy Cook that encourage log logical reasoning and problem solving. And those are just three of the resources that we're, that we're using uh, to try to meet the needs of all the students. So how have our actions affected student performance? So um, the first way is that students are increasingly able to use higher order thinking skills to solve more in-depth tasks. We uh, specifically see that in grades five and six. They are working on problem solving tasks this year. Um, they, the sixth grade piloted the exemplar series. So, um, and also fifth grade worked on those problem solving tasks as well. Um, they specifically worked on representing their thinking in multiple ways, and they are writing about their math and explaining their thinking um, in depth. So they re really worked on their communication skills in math. The second way was students are showing a greater <coughs> ability to persevere. We have done lessons on perseverance in the primary and intermediate grades. We do look at the STAR data, and it's interesting to compare when students in the beginning might spend like seven minutes. And then as the year goes on, we work with them on taking a longer time on the, uh, on the test. And they really should spend between 20 and 30 minutes. And it's great to see their perseverance increase over the year. They take it three times a year, and we really can see that over time. Um, the other way was students are more reflective about their work. And this year, when I worked with fifth and sixth grade on those problem-solving tasks, we really worked on, re on the students reflecting about their math. When they work on problem-solving tasks using the exemplars, they use a rubric. It's a 4-3-2-1 rubric. And so the students are then able to reflect on their work and say, well, what did I do well? What do I still need to work on? And they write about that, and they think about, well, what do I need to add on to my work the next time? Um, and we've seen a lot of growth and progress with that this year. The students are really proud of the progress that they've made in that area. The, the fourth way was students are using math talk strategies more consistently and we're seeing that throughout the grades that the math talk strategies are being implemented throughout all the grades. Our next steps. So our first step is to complete the math curriculum templates to ensure consistency and this year we worked very closely with Melissa Howie, our ACES consultant. Um, she came in and worked very closely with fourth grade and I and we worked on all the templates and we, com we completed them. So it was a really great, great progress that we made in that and we were really happy that all the templates are now done for fourth grade. And um, this week she will be coming in to work with first grade and start that and uh, continue that work. And next year in the next uh, school year she will be working with us in grades two, three, three and five. We're also really um, uh, interested in expanding math workshop throughout the grades. Uh, as you know, workshop is a model of instruction. So there's a mini lesson, and uh, then there's small group work, independent practice. 
Um, it really gives teachers an opportunity to work with small groups of students and to provide differentiated uh, materials for, for students. Uh, we, as we transition to using Math Workshop more, we're going to be using um, lab sites. So um, teachers visiting a classroom where um, Math Workshop is really um, happening um, and being done really well. Um, and we have done some of that in the past and teachers get very energized when they go into another classroom and they're able to see how Math Workshop is working, how it's organized. Um, how the teacher uh, gets around to see different students. Um, so we're going to um, be focusing on that. Um, and we'll also be talking again in the math committee um, about math workshop. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Maureen. Jane. Can I, can I add something before they Oh, yes. One, thank you. Um, <coughs> to take that 30 something slide down to this <laughs> thing and, and as we said condense it but I just as I talked about workshop and I know in your last math committee meeting you took a field trip and went to a classroom teacher's room to kind of look at how she had been setting that up and you know you said the words people were energized they want to try different things and I think about the way we talk about workshop reading and writing workshop and and over time how that has grown and it started with a small group and we've got a very committed small group in this committee but when Lisa and I posed that we wanted to do um, a book club um, this this coming school year professional book club with it is a connection from all of your reading strategies that you use in reading workshop and it ties them and links them directly to math workshop so we thought we might get a few people I think we've got oh, 30 or 40 people signed up so yeah. don't, don't ask the logistics yet we haven't gotten there well, so people well, are people. <laughs> and there isn't I think Steve you asked this a while ago there isn't a Columbia for math workshop it's from multiple resources yeah. and it's from teachers kind of doing this groundwork um, and sharing that with each other so when I said we've done a few lab sites a similar model that we're building yeah. here so um, we do have resources to go to but um, I think we just have to yeah. you know work with each other but I we were really excited yeah so we're excited we book. Mm -hmm. what's the can you tell the name of the book you from reading from, from reading to math, math. math. From reading to from, from reading to math. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, I have two questions. So one is, um, you mentioned sort of like measuring the perseverance by the time spent on things. What? How do you measure the higher order thinking skills to solve more in depth tasks? What does that, that mean? It, that was through the problem solving test that we did. And when I was talking about like fifth and sixth grade, when they're looking at like the um, rubrics that we're looking at, like we have a pre-assessment, like, you know, give them a task and ask, the, ask them to solve it and representing their thinking, communicating their ideas, and they fill out, they, we score them. And then, you know, looking at that growth over time and seeing them do similar tasks and see that much they've grown um, and, you know, really explaining their thinking and um, to somebody who wouldn't know math. I get excited about it because that was one of my goals this year. <laughs> With fifth grade, I was in every fifth grade classroom doing this work, and sixth grade piloted it, and we want to continue it next year. Um, it's amazing to see how students can use number lines and coordinate planes and graphs <coughs> and tables to represent math and never do an algorithm, and to be able to explain their thinking to someone that wouldn't be that might not know math and be able to explain and then and the children's pride in their work and wanting to get like three as a practitioner and four as an expert level and you have an apprentice a novice a practitioner and expert level and students may be starting out as a novice and say i really want to be an expert and working towards that and then modeling that throughout the year we mo did a lot of modeling and a lot of doing and we partner work with that I was going to add one question thing is more about a nuts and bolts thing. Okay. So I ask all so at the end of the year, the highlight is to see all the stuff that comes home out of bags of all of my <laughs> children, and we look through all of it. Um, and the one thing is, you mentioned resources. So it always drives me crazy for the eight years that I've been on this board that yeah. the math workbooks yes. are 85 percent empty. So we um, have, we, we, I think we have a solution for that. It says, you know, investigations is a resource. 
it's not something that we do page by page. So we now we now have downloaded all those, so they're not going to be getting workbooks. Okay. So that's teachers that's will, a, yeah. That's so good. it's because it's sat in the only one. I looked at that. Yeah. So, so we're sure I went page it's, by page yeah. the ones that were, and I folded yeah. them down and, and added yeah. up the two. We works. had a contract; they came, but now we've downloaded yeah. all those, and so mm -hmm. they will just be using what they need. Perfect. So that, yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> and um, I wanted to say I was going to have two questions when we were done. You answered both of them. Um, workshop, so that's something that we're looking to implement kind of across the board, or we're looking to implement it where we see it the most effective. I, I wasn't sure. I know you said some people are using it, not everybody's using it. Um, you're, you know, trying to model it a little bit very effective, you know, workshops. Ultimately across the board, starting with the members of our committee and those who are adding to that NAP committee, those would be our first groups. Well, we have a representative from every grade level. Yeah. What I will say though about math workshop is um, because we're asking teachers to provide differentiated activities, okay, um, and to really get to know what their students can do, really the only way to do that really well is with the workshop model because with the workshop model, you have a mini lesson, but then you are having students go off and do different things that is, are right for them. Um, if you don't do the workshop model, then it's very difficult to, to do that for students. And secondly, if the workshop is really working well, students are busy and involved and they are not disturbing the teacher and asking a million questions. And therefore, the teacher is able to meet with a student or a small group of students to either for enrichment or for um, reinforcing of skills. Um, and you can't do that when, um, when you are just teaching to the entire class. So that's really the two main things that you know, we want, the, the, yeah. the reasons that we do workshop. I think over the years that we 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 really worked really hard on putting together differentiation activities. So I think teachers are more ready now because it's a process, right? Right. So we have to have the materials ready, and I think they're ready. They we have representatives from every grade level. We had a lot of people come in already do a lab site, and they were showed a lot of interest in that. And just to have 30 to 40 people sign up for the book alone mm -hmm. is really exciting. So they're ready to do that work. That, that's great, because I, I know in the past, you know, there's been a high comfort level with workshopping, right. you know, reading and writing, and it takes time to have a, that comfort level um, in math. So it's exciting that the teachers are that engaged in, you know, in getting close to the workshop model. That, but that's just right book, I, I you have access to right. just right books. Right. Because the books are right. leveled for right. you. Right. Right. There's no dust right now. You have to create dust right now. There's no dust right now. You figure it out. The other thing that I'll say about workshops, and this is true for readers and writers workshop and for math workshop, is that um, if you just put aside the content area, okay, we are trying to get students to be um, problem solvers. So if they have a conflict with somebody that they're playing a game with, maybe they can try to work it out on their own, okay? If their pencil breaks, they don't have to say, where's another right. pencil? Um, you know, if they're confused about something, they can ask questions. You know, we, we want students to, um, to feel that they're empowered to be able to do these things, whether it's math, science, whatever. We don't want students to be constantly thinking that they need to ask a teacher or an adult every time they're confused or, um, or there's some, some thing that's, you know, uh, disturbing them. Um, of course that doesn't mean that we don't want to answer questions about <coughs> content, but, um, you know, we, we really want these little ones to grow up to be independent, you know, and to be able to um, go out into the big wide world without um, needing, you know, a little hand to hold. So that's another big part of Math Workshop, at least the way that I see it. Um, the other thing is the rollout, so the rollout for curriculum, and I know that's an incredibly time-consuming and incredibly involved process. So you mentioned, I think, every grade through the end of next year except sixth. Right. Or, so sixth and, is... And K. Sixth and K. Okay, I'm sorry. I forgot about K. Right. Okay. Maybe so the following year? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we would like... To we will see what we can do about that. Right now, they're not, we think we're being as good as we can be yeah. in terms of the time we have with our consultants, the two of you, um, people coming out of classrooms, because that's when it happens. Um, and no, and I, was, I, I was just saying yep. that's, that Maybe was, I think. Six, but six, six, grade, six, grade, six, grade, six grade did some work around content. Um, <coughs> two 
two years ago, so it's not like they right. And they're they're and they are the using the school. resource that they're using. You know, they had talked to the middle school. Uh, the middle school opted. The, right. I don't know what they opted for, but um, off the top of my head, but it's not the same one we're using. And so the teachers are really yeah. The content is there, so once you go through that, I've a little really similar to the investigations, you have to kind of use it a little before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I I I thought that was like ahead of um, what um, mm. you had updated. Yeah. So I was yay. Yeah. Mm. We're, we're, we're trying. Uh, not the other way. And, 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 to, and to the question, you know, because we've had some conversations yeah. at, at the board level about curriculum and, and, the, and the pace of all that, um, I, I do want to make, make sure that I'm clear that, you know, and recognize that there has been a lot of work that has gone on. And you've heard about that work during the course of the years. It's a matter of those, th there are different components that have been done. It's a matter of pulling it all together and having teachers own it, understand it, be able to really implement it. Um, and um, so, you know, while there's still more work to be done, there's been a lot of work behind, so it's kind of synthesizing it all and putting it together, and really and having having someone from the outside who were real, we're valuing Melissa Howie's help in terms of keeping it consistent, from grade level to grade level, up and down um, in that process. So, and and you know how important you know the whole math initiative and where we're at and where we're going is to the board. So, you know, given I know you know the budget situation, if there's things that come up, you know, we mm -hmm. we would you know, try to support, you know, additional needs or additional resources mm -hmm. or whatever it is mm -hmm. that keeps us moving because mm -hmm. everybody, I think, is, you know, very excited about mm -hmm. so, Thank you. Good. Anybody Jean else? Marine, thank you. Jean Marine do a great job and I thank you for... Um, Can you just ask Lisa if she has anything? Lisa? I think Lisa checked. Oh. Out. Um, hello, Lisa. I, I heard your phone go off. Oh, so I, okay. I think she, yeah, I think she's gone. Okay. I think she That's fair. <laughs> she's, on, she's on the beach now in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> 95 degrees. Thank you. Okay. Where are we? We're on. Thank you again. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. On the, um, um, wellness. wellness tools for schools. Tools for schools. Do we yes. have a thing here? And we have a little presentation, okay. so I'm going to get back up again. Okay. And, uh, Over here. Um, Mr. Pula, Mrs. Trisco will be leading us through this presentation. So thank you everybody as we come before you again um, to talk a little bit about the blending of these committees and um, the work that's gone on through the year. Um, so as you know, we have a wellness committee that we are you know, required to have as a district, but I think as with so many of our committees here, the collaboration is just, it surpasses anything that I've worked with. And um, when you hear Mr. Pulo talk about tools for schools, you may have heard me say, you know, I was on an initial tools for schools like three different times I got trained in it, kind of never got out of the <laughs> gate. Um, we went around, we did it once, but we have really sustained that. So it's a credit to the folks and you'll see them all um, shortly. But as you know, um, you know, we do have a wellness policy here. Um, it, we do talk about creating um, a school environment that promotes health and well-being. So you know how much we value physical activity. That's why we ask you to pack the snow boots because we are outside or we are having movement breaks in the classroom. You know, some of our primary grades have had a second, shorter outdoor break. We think that's very important um, for our little people and for the adults to make sure that there is movement. And, and that is a big part of what we do. As well as the nutrition aspect, we do make sure and try to remind that healthy snacks during the day, we make sure there's time in the day for those healthy snacks. And you'll hear me say shortly, you know, the cafeteria and the healthy choices. I am a frequent flyer in the cafeteria. So you'll get to hear a little bit about the menus there. Um, we also believe that the fitness levels of our students are very important. It's why we provide and the physical education teachers have access to so many resources and thank you for being so supportive of that. These are the committee members. There are some that are on both and it is a time commitment. So again, you know, repetitive theme here. We thank everyone for being part of that. Um, we do meet multiple times a year. We try to set a goal for the year. What are we talking about? What are we looking at? 
and everyone has an equal voice. But not just the members of this committee, folks share information with the members and they bring it, bring it to the committee so that you don't have to be a member serving on the committee to kind of be heard. So thank you to all of those folks and, and uh, thank you to John Madonna. He truly has been, and I'll probably stealing else thunder here, he's been a guiding force for us on Tools for Schools. Um, and some of the things we talk about end up coming back to wellness. So while they're separate, they really are very, very connected. Some of our initiatives, um, a few years ago, with the support and in consultation with all our medical advisor, we talked a little bit about our food celebrations. And you know, so many of us celebrate with food. You get together, you know, it was just Father's Day, I'm sure there was maybe a cookout or dinner or something, but how else can we celebrate? So we started with birthdays, you know, and we took away the birthday cupcakes. Because in talking with Shannon Martinello, our consultant, you know, there's 20 children, that's 20 birthdays, and then they have the cupcakes at the soccer party. And then, so let's think of some other things. So you see some ideas up there for other ways to celebrate. And, you know, anecdotally, uh, Mrs. Sherman and I give out our birthday pencils, and, you know, we get approached in the hall, it's my birthday in April, and my mom's birthday was last week, and my baby sister's birthday is next <laughs> week. Just pencils for the children and some of the adults because, you know, they want them too. Um, so that's just one little thing that we do to try to make that day special. The classrooms do all different things. You know, there's birthday stickers and birthday hats, but it's a celebration that doesn't involve food. Um, we still have our celebrations with food. We ask teachers to kind of think about those thoughtfully throughout the year. How many are you having? What will be the food that comes? And I don't, I won't say it right, but Ms. Piasek and Ms. Regan, you know, don't be a piggy we need three on your plate. And that was kind of the rule of the celebration. But it stuck with me because children made very thoughtful choices about what they were having because there was a sweet treat. So you would pick one. So those are some things that we try to carry forward because it's not about total denial, it's about moderation. And we're talking about that in the nutrition aspect. Um, we did have our environmental stewards, you notice, and, and thankfully we have our recycling receptacles in the cafeteria. Some more initiatives for the physical activity, um, and, and this is just a few of the things that we do. You heard earlier tonight um, Mr. Neo talking about the running club. Um, we always participate in the 100th day exercises. Um, all of the children in first grade in the gym, just one other day, learn to swim a whole week where students might not have an opportunity to have that experience are once a day in the pool. Um, we've expanded jump rope for heart, swim for heart, and uh, yes, we still have swimming Olympics. Some of the other things that we are doing as part of the curriculum, um, the students do the mile run, they have the pacer, so those are some of our required physical activities. Um, Mrs. Sherman and I would like to add to this next year. May 7th is a day that's called ACEs, all children exercising simultaneously. So we would like to try to incorporate that um, somehow, not really sure, school-wide walk maybe, who knows. But just something else to add, that physical activity is part of what we do. So um, you heard me say that I frequent the cast. Um, I was not a part of the cafeteria task force on that committee. Mrs. Sherman did have that role and uh, Nancy White before her. But there was a lot of work that came out of that and now there's been a blending. So it's been rolled back into the wellness committee. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Pulo and he will take it from here. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> so again, the cafeteria task force, uh, as you'll see, been in place and in collaborative discussion for a little over two years. A lot of good work came out of the force, and by no means is that work or discussion going away. It's expanding into where it logically makes sense for a variety of reasons, because there isn't a lot of ways redundant conversation. A lot of the members of both the Wellness Committee and the Tools for Schools Committee um, sat in on several of the task force meetings and were ongoing members. So um, some of the, the outcomes that have come from that discussion have been significant enhancements on our menus. Um, we introduced or expanded 
our farm to school programs and where it's possible we tap first local farmers um, but we also use our USDA purchasing commodities which is local in the Connecticut New York Massachusetts region so um, local is the, the desired theme it depends on season it depends on volume uh, but certainly have introduced that we introduced our guest chefs and demonstrations where the kids got to watch the exhibits um, we hope to roll out more of those in the future as well and we've been very fortunate that the membership on the task force and the continuing membership on wellness committee um, our key stakeholders including our nutrition consultant who can reach out and explore future guest chefs and come in and again expand our awareness expand our nutritional education um, our taste testings probably not as frequent this past year as we would have liked but um, this is rowdy the pto and members of, of administration have helped to um, fine-tune some of the missing elements and we hope to get that stream uh, better up and running more frequently next year and the last that you know it is partly out of the cafeteria task force is partly out of the menu enhancements we've definitely seen increased student participation uh, and as you'll see in the July Finance Committee this year has set up to be probably a blockbuster year for the cafeteria program and I was asking Mrs. Roddy you know for any fingers on the pulse what do you think it is and she said it's a combination you know menu enhancements there's uh, PTO communication and parent obviously student participation has increased so it's a combination of elements that have added to a very successful and enriching program for everybody around. a lot to show on this slide but the most important thing for those of you that want to dig into the details that web address that's the district cafeteria website you can find the monthly menus you can find um, the sort of blank sheet of paper over on the right, the a la carte items. A la carte is anything that is sold in addition to uh, an entree or a reimbursable meal. Anything that's on that a la carte is also found in the vending machine. So what is sold in the kitchen is sold in the vending machine. There are no different products available from one venue versus the other. Um, you can also see there's some links to some very detailed presentations again depending on the thirst and appetite for the visitor I definitely encourage you checking it out spending a few minutes the presentations telltale there's a lot of work that has been going on in the cafeteria and a lot of work to be proud of in the food service program so now we move on to tools for schools and again just a reminder what is tools for schools it's all about indoor air quality indoor comfort occupancy is it too hot too cold is it thermally quality acceptable for and, and healthy for occupants um, some of the key outcomes that have come out of the past uh, this will finish our fifth year <coughs> in, in committee um, we've got a systematic replacement and plan in place for replacement of classroom rugs so that you no know, classroom once we're fully through which i think the s-wing in 2017 will do 100 percent rotation no classroom rug will be over five years old and if you think of the amount and the types of activities the students do on the classroom rugs you can see why that's important to make sure you've got uh, you don't have all the stuff in there same thing we've and it's communication you'll see it in an upcoming slide the success for tools for schools hasn't been anything in my humble opinion anything other than communication it's a willingness to you know how can we improve how can we educate one another it's not going in there as authorities to faculty and staff and saying this is is the ideal way to do it it's being open to discussion and it's a two-way discussion a couple notables from our um, survey which goes out around the middle of October so teachers are still getting back transitioning kicking off a start of a school year um, so much adjustment and so many deadlines going on at that time uh, to say i'm thrilled that the response participation is really an understatement because it is something it's one more thing we're asking for teachers to take time to do and to give us feedback but clearly by the level of participation there's an understanding of the value of that um, a couple highlights <coughs> if you look at 2012 
um, versus this past October, the number of ceiling tiles that are free of leaks, it was 39%. It's now 70%. Would we want to see that number to be 100%? Absolutely. A building that's approximately 170,000 square feet, it's probably the unattainable. 70% is a pretty good threshold. Um, again, classroom rugs and classroom windows that are operable. So some of you may, as, as I, when we first looked at this, like we just went through a building upgrade. Like, why is that not 100%? Some of the feedback, and again, through surveying and speaking to teachers that said, no, my window's not operable because of a bench or a countertop where it is, it's not conveniently accessible. So the member said, no, it's not operable because I never get to it by choice to, to operate it. Uh, other reasons are missing screens. So the window's operable. I don't open it because I don't want the, the bugs and the visitors in the room. Um, so again, we're working through that. They become work orders and, and Mr. Kula and his team plow through that. And again, we strive for 100%, but we keep our expectations realistic. I'd like to focus for a minute on this. Um, as Gina pointed out, John Laudano is our health inspector with Quinnipiac Valley Health District. Um, he is with us on all of the tools for schools, groundwork, as well as site visit and observations. Um, it's also required of him because that's what he uses to compile his health inspection report. He points out that we continue to look for ways to improve. And this is even after the citizens of Woodbridge supported a $13 million building upgrade. A lot of work has been done. Mechanicals and systems are updated, but nobody is saying we can rest on that laurel and we don't have maintenance and learning to do. So we all acknowledge this work. And I um, the added additional value to this is that was an unsolicited comment. Um, Mr. Laudano included that in his annual inspection report. So it's his observation, it's his work. A lot of text on this slide, probably the Reader's Digest summary. Um, in the staff members' feedback in their survey, we saw a pattern where people reported that periodically during the day, it would get uncomfortably stuffy. Little fact-finding, digging, exploration. We learned that when teachers are shutting their classroom lights, whether it's to be to use the smart board or to create atmosphere, building occupancy assumes that the room is unoccupied, therefore stops exchanging fresh air into the room. We've done a workaround where Mr. Kula has programmed to override that during school hours. There's, there's obviously a benefit to that unoccupied mode. That's where the energy savings are derived from. But we also want our occupants to be thermally comfortable. Doesn't really show as well in the light um, but what you're seeing there is a typical example of a Tools for Schools walkthrough. And gentlemen, standard for those of you that don't know, is Greg Kula, our facilities manager. And no, he's not leaning on a stick. That's actually our state-of-the-art stick that he would put up to a return vent that has a tissue to it that makes sure that the vent is drawing out and exchanging air. What's funny here, and, and again, we try to be minimal disruption mm -hmm. to the classroom. The students, this is a first grade class, and Mrs. Finelli tells us afterwards, the students were doing what they've always been told. If you don't know the answer or you need help, ask an adult. <laughs> Mr. Kula happened to be there at the right time. <laughs> so once again, we finished five years of uh, we think process and quality improvement in nature. And I will just close with this. If I had to point to why, as Mrs. Briscoe pointed out in, in former lives, mine included, um, Tools for Schools is another example of very time consuming, but very valuable time spent initiative. Uh, it's success and it's been sustained at Beecher because there's an open communication with staff. Any questions? Right. That's great. Yeah. That's great. You know, thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. We know, you know, how important this is and how well it's going. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pro proactive approach that allows us to
get the things before they get us. Thank you. Okay, so where are we? We're on facility. <laughs> um, facilities, we can. Finance, we've already done. Policy, we've done. Yay, we've done all of this. Okay, any public comment? No. Okay. Um, normally we move adjournment, but since we don't have a quorum. <laughs> oh, we can't go home. Yeah, we can't go home. Okay. All right. Okay. 